Welcome back, everybody, to the uh, Sustainability Lounge for our UN SDG Impact 10X. Again, we are delighted to have another critical conversation with our thought leaders around sustainability. And today we have a great opportunity to uh, continue our conversation on how do we measure impact on sustainability and how do we know that we're actually having success with our projects. So as an introduction, my name is Dr. Sam Horseman. I'm leading the Impact 10X and I'm also the JCU Innovation Facilitator. And today we have the great honor to have Professor Ian Atkinson with us today, who is uh, the Acting uh, Dean of E-Research e and the Professor of E-Research. And also we had Ian here sharing his insights on Lixia, but today, we have a great opportunity to discuss with Ian a great project around specific microgrids and a project that really looks at the impact on sustainable actions and sustainable projects. So thank you, Ian, for being here with us in the Sustainability Lounge. Love to hear more about the project and um, over to you to give us a high level view and to also have more discussions around the technology. Great. Well, look, um, thanks very much, Samantha, for the invitation. It's real, really wonderful to be here. And uh, to all the participants out there, um, you're in great hands with Samantha. Just, she's just a, an ornament to the university and we're just really lucky to have her. So it's really wonderful to have this opportunity. So um, last time Samantha and I met up, she was in my office here and we're just pulling out some gadgetry from behind me different things I've been involved in in the past. So I do a lot of work uh, around IoT and the sustainability regime. So what's IoT in and out of things? It's really just low-cost, pervasive uh, devices that can go out and measure something. Now, what you do with it is the important thing. The, the, the technology part of it's really peripheral. Um, and so the, the project that I want to talk to you about today is something that I guess, actually kicked off from um, a real world set of challenges that we've been participating with with um, the local Townsville Council with for well over a decade. Um, the sustainability managers there have, have been fascinated with how to communicate to the community that they have to change. And they've kind of taken a very different perspective. They're very uh, engaged with the concept called collective social learning. So this is the idea where instead of marketing to people or telling people what to do, you actually have to engage with them and make them believe, make them understand, create the, the sense of ownership about the problem so that they not they don't just uh, commit to actions and do things differently in their own lives, but they actually talk about it with other people. So it's a way to actually get impact. So, you know, Impact 10X is well named because that's the idea that one person will talk to another person change their mind and talk to the next so it's really less about any particular activity and more about the fact that we start people talking about it and thinking about it and then they're receptive and once you're receptive you can do things so we've been involved in lots and lots of you know whiteboard sessions and, and practical activities with the community over a long time and where we've got to one of the things we learned is it's best to show people to actually let them build things, to make things themselves. And so we, we ran a number of what we call sprint events, must have been be half a dozen more now, maybe a dozen, where on weekends we'd, we'd get a bunch of equipment and under shady trees, we'd actually get people to assemble little sensors to measure things like temperature and humidity and uh, perhaps barometric pressure or rainfall. Uh, we get them to build a sensor and take it home and actually connect that to a citywide network and they'd take that information we could give it back to them and we've worked with schools and others so really what we're talking about now is actually taking that 10 times so we've designed and built up um, a little very low cost but really accurate IT device that we think we can probably get prices in bulk down to something like $50 which would kind of last forever have a lifetime of at least seven years and it did just sit there and have a GPS so when people put it in the backyard, it measures. Now, it gives that data back to them. But really what we want to do is aggregate up city data 
uh, anonymize it and then go back to a portal where we can actually show people what their environment looks like today, the temperature in their backyard or in their front yard, because it varies. Uh, and then project for five years, 10 years, what will it be when global warming's put a half a degree on now? And then we know in these tropical environments, high sun, those effects are amplified. And then, you know, that often alarms people. And then we'll try and give them the option of doing something, actually creating an action. Now, it could be uh, repainting their roof so it's white, which makes a huge difference in the dry tropics, less so in the wet tropics because of mould growth, and pulls degrees of temperature out of their homes. And we can show them that. Or planting a tree in their backyard or front yard. And what that will do, looking at the shade profile, if they get a three-metre tree or a five-metre tree in their front yard, what will that do to the, the afternoon temperature or the morning temperature? So we want to give people then the ability to look forward into their future and see what action, what impact of that action is going to be down the track based on real data today that they've actually taken the effort to, to produce, and build and deploy and aggregate that with other people's data. So if we can get a thousand of these devices out there, with some other satellite temperature data and other things, we'll punch that together into a really cool portal and let them look at it. And the other thing that I'm, I'm quite passionate about is um, we want to show people the impact that those high temperatures will have on their local flora and fauna. What, what lizards are going to go locally extinct? What birds are not going to visit them anymore? And again, trying people to take actions at a hyper local level, a real microgrid, their own home, or perhaps their own sporting club, or maybe their own street to plant a street tree and look after it and actually change their environment. So we want to try and give people uh, the visceral understanding and some feedback so that it actually is worth investing their time and energy and effort into making these changes. So I'm sorry that's a bit long winded, Sam. But oh, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. It's perfect. And I think it also, um, you know, gives a sense of, as you said, call to action. But how can we get involved? Um, this sounds an, an amazing project. Right. And, so yes. this is the thing. So we've, we've actually designed these things up and, and built a few. We need to think of a business model to make this mm. work. You know, in my, in my crazy mind, I have the idea of newspapers. It used to be back in the day when I was in short pants, that newspapers on su Sundays would actually come out with little uh, uh, additions into the newspaper and they'd be things of paper you could build up. We kind of have this dream that in, you know, we could get News Corp to sponsor every home in Cairns to get one of these things and they would just kind of snap, snap, put it together like a little bit of Lego, whack it in their backyard yeah. or their front yard and we'd, and, and they'd sign on to the T's and C's and they can see their data and only they can see their data, but other people can see like the heat, the genuine heat map, the proper, properly well-named heat map. And mm. um, I think there's probably a bit, there's maybe a business model in say giving people free access to, to their home or their sporting group, but then selling that data to local government mm. or developers or other people that, that want um, more more accurate data at a broader scale so that they can actually plan their um, developments around this. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, you know, people are now using these kinds of things um, semi-routinely, but it is remarkable how microclimate changes enormously and how it can be influenced. So we need to think of a business model, and I kind of have this, mm -hmm. this dream, you know, you've probably seen this in your course where you started a skateboard and go through to a motorbike and a car and end up with an Elon Musk rocket ship. <laughs> I kind of think starting in a few schools, yeah, moving that to a local government, engaged local government, getting that to maybe a state government to participate, get a few more local governments, north and south, maybe getting it into rural regions, getting some, um, get some hyper local data which can be used for agriculture or perhaps warning mm -hmm. about flooding or fires building that up and you know really the end goal would be to have like a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand of these things all around the country mm -hmm. just giving us hyper local information that we can build up into highly accurate well resolved temporally and spatial information so that we can 
we can have for Australia like a real time map, historical and mapped into the future of what our climate, our local climate's looking like. This is What's amazing. The business model? Yeah, exactly. And and it sounds to me like Ian that you're giving us a challenge. <laughs> yeah, I think. Look, I think. I think a lot of these tools, you know, everyone wants to make wax of money, uh, and that's fine. But sometimes you have a chance for things to just change how we do things, and not do it for evil, you know, not do it for mm. excessive surveillance or a surveillance capitalism or the attention economy or something, but actually change how we're living our lives um, and how to get conversations around sustainability mm -hmm. going and get people connected, genuinely connected and understanding these things. And, you know, I think another thing that people might want to think about is that simple concepts get talked about a lot, mm -hmm. but people don't really know what they are. So actually, you know, how many of the people in the group actually know what heat is or energy right, or temperature? Mm -hmm. And yet that drives, that beautiful scene behind us there, mm. it's driven by all those things, There's that thermodynamic. So we talk about these things every single day and yet actually we don't really know what they are. Now that's normal. That's how we are as people. I, mm -hmm. I don't know what money is, but, um, but we get without that deep knowledge we can get lost and we can get you know uh bedazzled and and yet perhaps mixed up perhaps deliberately mixed up confused mm -hmm. so again another way to communicate um around value of stem value of knowledge mm -hmm. value of information yeah Excellent. And and I guess it goes back to what we started with that collective social learning, because mm. that's what this project really um, aspires yeah. to. Absolutely. And having those 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 critical conversations and um, defining exactly what what does heat mean? And I think yeah, I think yeah. even even a big data piece, I mean, people hear these mm. terms, they sort of yeah. know about it. Well, actually, let them viscerally engage with it, connect with it, participate in it, mm. in, a, in a direct and clear way, not in someone mining their phone data or mining their internet um, surfing, but actually deliberatively connecting to it and deliberatively seeing the result and seeing the power that you get when you aggregate lots of information mm. and, and the value, the positive value that that can um, generate. And that's that's really impactful. I think it would be. I I, I mean I, I hope it will be, but um, that's 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 one of the dreams. But I think it would be great for him to bring to this group. It would be so amazing. Think about yeah yeah. I think this would be a great challenge for the group to also think about, you know, leveraging um, a a business model for you to to think about that and to have those. Or, or yeah. yeah, or technical things that can be added to it that we haven't oh, thought yeah. of. Okay, that's or, good. Yeah. Um, or other ways to use the data that we haven't thought of. And I love that idea that, I mean, you've touched on so many of the sustainability development goals here, um, The you know, from biodiversity to, you know, tracking climate change and and, and, and temperature and, and uh, like all of this is um, aligned to the majority of the, of the goals already. So, but I think um, really an important point that you um, demonstrated was the, the biodiversity and, and what this data means to 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 what we see in our back gardens and and yeah. our our species that we enjoy from day to day um will they you know still be there and i think this is definitely as you mentioned a a call to action hmm. yeah i mean there's been great work that's had uh, james cook over the years so professor steve williams from Biology, you know, you look at those mountains behind your hills and he's done this great work showing that things like the Lenroid possum and many other species, they have temperature gradients. As you go up the hill, it gets a bit cooler, as you know, mm -hmm. but as it heats, they're going further and further up the hill and they're now all at the top. Mm. 
Mm. And soon they're going to have to grow wings to fly or they'll go. Wow. Uh, and so those gradients are real and those things are happening. You know, it's, it's, it's well over a degree warmer than it was mid, mid last century. Yeah. You know, and, and what's our goal from the UN? It's one and a half degrees. That's our Paris target, our stretch target. Mm-hmm. Um, every, like every point one of a degree counts, actually. And so you can see it in small reptiles, in uh, birds. Birds will migrate. They'll just simply migrate away. And, um, you know, think about even those casual interactions with animals that you have. Will, will they be the same? Yeah. So... Lots of reasons to get engaged. Very, very true. Are there any other um, insights or advice you would leave us as we embark on our Impact 10x sustainability? I, I think the big thing is to just, in a way, just clear your mind and remove those other old biases. I'm amazed whenever I work with younger school kids in particular, you know, that some of the ideas are just extraordinary because they're just unshackled. So in a way, I think coming to these events, it's a great opportunity to almost clear your mind of previous biases and and uh, forget about the things that haven't worked or those uh, things that have even worked before to shape you. And, and try and think of the future as it as it really should be. Identify those things that might block that future and then try and bust those apart so we can get to where we need to go collectively, all of us. Excellent advice. And uh, we're coming right up onto our, our perfect timing. So, Ian, did you have data on that? <laughs> perfect. I don't, I don't use a clock. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. It's It's been a pleasure uh, chatting with you and, and thank you for all those incredible insights that you've provided for our participants as we embark on our six-week journey. And uh, no doubt we'll be seeing you later on as we do our demo day on October 11th. So we look forward to sharing with you what we've come up with and um, and look forward I'm to I'm absolutely updates. looking forward to it. And uh, last bit of advice, have fun. It should be fun. It's not fun. <laughs> it's going wrong. Yeah. Great advice. Amazing advice. Thank you so much, Ian. Really, really appreciate your time and um, look forward to seeing you at the end of the journey on October 11th. Looking forward to it. Thanks very much.